When Fanless Tech posted about this silent mini PC, it caught my interest. When I saw the brand name, I was sold. How can you go wrong with a Max Tang? Clearly short for Maximum Poo Tang. Finally, a budget fanless mini that's made from metal with a name to match. This Tang sure is solid and comes with dual LAN ports so you can double st It features an Intel Elkhart J6412 Celeron CPU, which is quad core with Intel UHD graphics. Memory tops out at 3200 MHz, which is what I used for my tests and storage is one M.2 SATA SSD. I bought the bare bones, but there are pre-built options available. Inside the box, you'll find an HDMI cable, the 40 watt power supply, rubber feet times two, monitor mount, and screws. The description says you won't get the Wi-Fi antennas if you buy the bare bones, but I did. I.O. consists of dual USB 3 Type A's and Type C, as well as an audio jack on the front. On the back, you've got the dual antennas, USB 2, and HDMI. Something you don't see on a Mini very often is the SIM card slot on the side, which is useful when you don't have Wi-Fi coverage. Opening the bare bones tang is easy enough. It just takes four screws. Once you're inside, add your memory and storage. To finish it off, you can add the rubber feet on top of the screws. Price-wise, it's currently more than the Mini's 4M GK50 that comes with memory and storage, but that has a plastic case and worse I.O. Also, the CPU in the GK50 is slow. Let's compare the two in some benchmarks. In single-core Cinebench, the Max Tang gets a 10% higher score, and 20% in multi-core. I definitely noticed the performance improvement over the GK50 during my testing. This translates to a 23% improvement when encoding a video. The Tang also has a 37% higher performance score in 3D Mark DX11 and 35% in DX12. So, clearly a faster CPU and iGPU. The new gen Celeron kicks the older gen Pentium in the nads. When it comes to video playback, a 4K movie in VLC didn't drop any frames. If we up it to 4K 60fps on YouTube, 33 frames were dropped out of 10,194, which while not perfect, I think is okay. At 1440p 60fps, 18 frames out of 10,200 were dropped. Again, not perfect, but a very small amount. The Maxtang NX6412 does draw a little more power. It's just under 10 watts idle and maxed out at 26 watts, which is also higher than the GK50. Temperature wise, the CPU maxed out at 83C. Not great, but slightly better than the GK50. The top of the Mini does get hot and was uncomfortable to touch after a few seconds. All in all, both Minis see some performance loss over long periods of high load. For those in the market for a silent Mini PC with dual AN, I would definitely choose this over the Mini's Forum GK50. The performance boost is substantial, the build quality miles ahead, and the SIM slot a nice bonus. Let me know your thoughts on the Maxtang NX6412. Does it live up to its brand name? And subscribe for more lewd Mini PC reviews in the future. Cheers!